I'm Brandon Smith, and I'm the Workplace Therapist. My entire purpose and passion in life is one singular thing, and that's to help you live a life free from dysfunction. And let's be honest, folks, dysfunction is everywhere. Our bosses, our coworkers, our neighbors, even that grumpy barista that pours your coffee. And sometimes, sometimes, that dysfunction stares back at us in the face when we're getting ready in the mornings and we see ourselves in the mirror. Well, at the end of the day, life and work should not have to suck. The purpose of this show is to help you overcome those roadblocks in your life to help you realize the life you've always wanted. This is The Brandon Smith Show. I'm your host, Brandon Smith, and the entire purpose of this show is one singular thing, and that is to help you live a life that much more free from dysfunction. So for our session today and our podcast today, we have a very special topic and a very special guest. So we're going to talk about leadership, but we're going to take the topic of leadership and look at it through the lens of the military. So for our guest today to walk us through this, it's my good friend and colleague, Ken Keene. And Ken has got a lot of titles, so I want to make sure I get these right. He's retired lieutenant general from the Army. In addition to that, he's the associate dean of leadership development at Goisweta Business School at Emory University. So, Ken, thanks for coming on the show. Well, good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you. So before we jump into our topic of leadership, and I've got a lot of questions for you on kind of what that looks from the military's perspective, how that's evolved over time, and how you see that translating to the civilian world. Tell us a little bit about you. How did you, what, how did you get into the military in the first place, and what was kind of the, your journey? Well, um, I sort of uh, got into the military uh, rather by accident than uh, a deliberate decision. Like uh, most uh, uh, young men and women after uh, high school, I, uh, and this was in 1970, I ended up going to college, not really knowing what I wanted to do. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the first thing I started to pursue was uh, being a um, high school math teacher. Uh, but I struggled to pay my way through college. I ended up uh, meeting somebody, a, uh, a Vietnam uh, veteran who at the time was a major uh, from Special Forces, and uh, he sort of uh, uh, took me under his wing, so to speak, and convinced me to join a Reserve Officer Training Corps at Eastern Kentucky University. And before I knew it, uh, uh, I was uh, off going to Fort Benning to go through Airborne School, Ranger School, and uh, I thought I would spend maybe three or four years in the Army. At that time, I had never been west of the Mississippi and certainly never had been outside the United States, so I thought uh, the adventure of traveling an opportunity, obviously, to, to uh, learn new uh, skills and then uh, get out after four years and, uh, and go back to teaching uh, high school. And then 38 years later, I, uh, <laughs> I realized that I needed to get out and uh, pursue something else. So when you went through your career, you started off uh, in airborne school, ranger. Uh, what made you decide to then continue beyond that? Because I'm sure there were some inflection points where you said, you know, I, I could leave now and go into the civilian world, but you, you chose to stay in that. What was, what was going through your head when you did that? Well, I think uh, what, uh, the, what recruiters say is accurate in the sense that uh, I joined the Army for, and, and all of us, I think, many uh, joined the Army for a variety of reasons, uh, and, 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 and I just mentioned mine. Uh, you stay in the Army, I think, because uh, you love what you're doing, uh, you, uh, you want to serve others, um, but it really is about you re-enlist the family, uh, and the family has a lot to do with it. And I got married a day after I was commissioned uh, into the Army, so my wife and I took off, and our first assignment was Fort Ord, California, and I said we'd never been west of the Mississippi, so it was a big adventure. But I think uh, I decided to each time to stay in the Army because I loved what I was doing. I really enjoyed uh, the people I was doing it with, and um, the Army always offered me opportunities that uh, uh, I was excited to go do. So it was really about uh, love of who I was working with and, and the excitement of what we were doing. And this and it was an exciting time in our country in the late 70s and early 80s when I was making the decision uh, to whether to get out or to stay in. Yeah, I love that you said it's a the family chooses to kind of re-enlist. So right. it becomes really a family decision. Right. Uh, and so then when you retired from the Army, you joined Emory's Business School in a, a leadership associate dean for a leadership development role. What made you decide to take on that journey? Because that sounds like a very, it's a very 
in some ways it might be similar, but in some ways it's very different. Yeah, I mean, I <clears throat> when I really faced the fact that, uh, okay, it's time to get out, uh, um, I really hadn't thought a lot about what I really wanted to, uh, to do. I, uh, so I gave my wife uh, an opportunity to veto uh, what, uh, where we were going to go and what we were going to do. So she gave me a, some guidance. She said, I don't want to live in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, I want to be uh, uh, on the East Coast, close to uh, our kids. And um, uh, she said, I don't want you to travel more than one week a month. Uh, and one thing that I had always loved, uh, what I uh, did in the Army, was uh, the development of, of, of leaders. Uh, I had benefited greatly from those who I had worked for and worked around over the years, been mentored by, and then the opportunity to work with uh, those that I served with in the Army in leadership development and just working with people. So getting into... Uh, leadership development in some way is something that I honed in on uh, when I started looking to get out. And uh, I think like many things in life, um, I ended up at Guzetta purely by uh, uh, contacts that I had uh, uh, been associated with about three years prior. My son had gotten out of the Army, gone to Guzetta Business School to get his MBA, uh, I was invited up uh, to uh, speak at a leadership forum uh, in, uh, uh, around Veterans Day of 2010, which happened to be uh, about nine months after an earthquake in Haiti, which I was involved in. I met a few professors there, um, and when I got uh, ready to get out, uh, we reestablished contact and started talking about what I was going to do and... Uh, uh, and talked about the, uh, the opportunities. And, and before I knew it, we were talking about a potential position uh, or applying for a position here. And, I, uh, and it just really uh, uh, was very attractive to me to uh, be able to work with young people, particularly uh, uh, in uh, the business uh, realm of, uh, uh, of leadership development. Okay, so that's a really good segue to my next question. So I'm fascinated because when I think about the Army and the U.S. military, I th it, they have to lead so many kinds of people all across the globe and touch different cultures, ultimately to drive positive change. And that's a hard thing to do. So what have you seen over your career? Let's start with the military first. What were some of the principles that you saw that either were taught in the military or that you learned that make effective leaders? Yeah, I think what... Um, uh I learned over time uh, 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 was a couple of things. Um, and of course, the military has, uh, is one of our best institutions in our country in terms of leadership development, whether it's uh, uh, through our military academies or in our school systems as we bring up leaders. We're always uh, providing leaders opportunities to develop themselves and to prepare them for that next leadership role. But what I learned through that, as well as the experience, is, is, is a couple things. One is, um, I think you, have, you need to take care of yourself. By that, I mean um, uh, you really have to be able to uh, become, uh, seek greater self-awareness, and that means being able to work with those around you, seek uh, and uh, learn how to ask for feedback, uh, be able to give feedback, be able to have empathy uh, uh, towards others. You have to be able to lead yourself before you can lead others. Uh, and you have to uh, be able to, I think, leaders uh, you know, have to be grounded in a set of values. Our military is, is, is great about uh, uh, having a, a cultural and, and being able to integrate people from uh, uh, very diverse backgrounds, but to uh, put everybody into a... Uh, the same setting and, and try to inculcate a set of values that we all uh, believe in. And I think that's important uh, uh, for, for a leader. Yeah, so it sounds like in that, what you said, let me make sure I got this right, almost to be effective, you have to have a level of openness and humility. Right. To be able to receive feedback, hear it, right. know you don't have all the answers, uh, and, and, and really be aware of how you act and how that impacts other people. Is right. that fair? Right. Okay, so there's that, that self-awareness and kind of self-understanding, self-care first. Right. Got it. 
Yeah, and I think that is part of taking care uh, of yourself uh, in terms of making sure that you are ready to take on the privilege and the responsibility to lead others. Yeah. And I think uh, the, the second thing I would say is this aspect of I think you do need to be humble. By that, I, I mean uh, you need to put the team before self, and you mm. need to be willing uh, to do that. That doesn't uh, mean that you, you aren't thinking about what you want to do next, or, or, uh, but uh, I do believe that in order to be an effective leader, certainly in the military, it is a team sport. And, uh, and many times you, you're going to need to set aside your own uh, 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 personal uh, desires for the betterment of the team. And I learned that uh, at the very beginning, uh, principally uh, by going through the crucible of the U.S. Army Ranger School. And, mm. uh, and I don't think anyone graduates from the U.S. Army Ranger School by themselves. You do it uh, with a Ranger buddy and you do it with a Ranger team. And you learn that uh, you can't do it alone. You're not the smartest guy in the room or gal in the room. Uh, and you need to rely upon others, and they need to rely upon you. You need to be able to trust those on your right and left, certainly in the military, but I think in life in general. So I think that's an interesting challenge for a lot of folks that I work with, is that idea of trusting people that maybe they don't either know fully right. or those people haven't cleared their bar for trust. So do you, do you trust first? Or do you set out expectations and then people clear that and then you trust? Yeah, I think there's, it, it is a process that you go through in terms of developing relationships uh, and um, uh, being able to um, uh, open enough to uh, be able to trust the folks. It's, it's one of those things that's hard to obtain. It's easy to lose. Uh, and when you lose someone's trust, it's hard to regain it. So I think being very cognizant of the fact that it is a, uh, 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 the level of trust that you can have among your team members is going to, uh, 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 you're going to have to work on it. You need to work on it every day, and your actions count, and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and you have to demonstrate that every day, uh, whether you're at work or at home uh, uh, and, and in all settings. So you, you mentioned actions count. Is it about mm. that kind of predictability or reliability? Is that part how we build it? You know, it's when you kind of, kind of you, you do what you say and you say what you do right. kind of thing? Okay. Yeah, and I think it, uh, um, it is exactly that. You know, words are important, but uh, deeds uh, are more important. And uh, you can't uh, say one thing and do something else. People need, able, need to be able to trust what you're going to say, that you're going to do what you're going to say. Uh, and uh, you erode that when, uh, when, when you're inconsistent with your actions. Yeah, okay, so, right, so, so far we've heard kind of the self-care, self-awareness, mm -hmm. and we've had um, you know, team before self. Those have been our, our, our first two points. Yep. Do, you, do you have another one yep. for us? Uh, I think the third one would be uh, learn from yesterday, live for today, and prepare for the future. Uh, you know, you can't change uh, what happened yesterday, but you need to learn from yesterday. You need to be cognizant of uh, of the past, and you need to uh, benefit from it by uh, understanding what, what really worked well, so you can uh, hopefully use that and, and repeat it, and what didn't go well, and be open enough in working with others to learn from the past. You need to live for the day, because results do count. You need to give 100%, and then some, every day, um, and you need to do that, I think, in a way that enhances the ability of your team to be successful. And then you need to prepare for the future. So if you're a leader, you need to be thinking about uh, those that are working for you or with you in terms of uh, what am I doing for them as we go into the future. And that gets into leader development. You need to be preparing those that will come behind you. So learn from yesterday, live for today, prepare for the future. Right. Okay, so I've got some more questions on that for you. But before we do that, we've got to go into our break. So we're going to move into break. Uh, stay tuned. When we come back, I'm going to continue to pick Ken's brain on what we can learn from the military and from his vast experience in leader development. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. job plus the right culture plus the right boss equals workplace happiness. 
the number one reason people leave jobs is problems with their boss. A horrible boss can make us dread every Monday, but an amazing boss can make us so excited to work that we'd go in on weekends. Finding your perfect boss is not only possible, it's one of the most impactful steps you can take in crafting your perfect career. Visit theworkplacetherapist.com and click on guides to learn how to find and get your perfect boss, whether that means making the decision to move on or turning your current boss into the perfect leader you want them to be. Our bosses have so much influence over our work and our whole day. Working for the right boss alone can be a winning career strategy. Welcome back from the break. This is the Brandon Smith Show. I'm your host, Brandon Smith. And today we're talking about leadership and leadership development. And we're talking about it through the lens of the military. And I've got a good friend and guest, Ken Keen, joining us. Ken, good to, good to have you back. Thank you. Uh, and so let's talk a little bit about your, um, you had a couple points. So right before the break, we talked about kind of self-care, self-awareness. We talked about um, uh, putting the team first before self. And then now we're talking about kind of this idea of learning from the past, living for the future, for, I mean, living for the present and then preparing for the future. And so you and I were talking a little bit over the break. It immediately made me think of something that you really prescribe to our MBA students and that's after action reviews. Tell us a little bit about what those are and how the military uses that to make sure that they're constantly learning from the past. Well, uh, the military, uh, the U.S. military uh, in all the services have used after action reviews or uh, for decades, and it's uh, basically a simple process where we uh, uh, require that teams uh, at different levels, uh, after they perform an operation or whether it's in training or in combat, that they sit down and examine that uh, from the lens of you know, what went well, what didn't go well, and uh, what can we do to uh, learn from this uh, either training event or project or uh, combat operation that uh, when we do it again, uh, we can do it better um, or we can uh, share it with others who may be doing a similar thing so that uh, they can benefit from that. So I have a, we have a simple acronym that we sort of created in the Gwazetta Business School around this, uh, and it's uh, PEARL. You know, what did you plan? P. Uh, what did you execute? E. And what, did, what were the results? And then what can we learn from those results? So P-E, little a, R-L. What did we plan? What would we execute? And what, we, uh, what were the results and what we learned from it? And I think it really is just a process. Uh, and uh, I, businesses uh, obviously can, uh, can, can, can do this. It doesn't uh, uh, take a lot of time. But you do have to stop and reflect. It's really just about reflection and learning from what you just went through. It's so funny because so few organizations and teams do this. It's not rocket science, no. but so few do it. But the ones that seem to be high, the highest performing do. Right. So I've heard about uh, uh, emergency room teams do something like this. A lot right. of consulting teams will do something like this. But a lot of just general, regular, quote unquote, regular teams right. never spend time to reflect. So it's almost like they're doomed to re re repeat the failures of the past. Right. And, and I think what I see in the uh, highest performing teams are the ones that not only do this, but then they figure out how to apply it, how to capture the information, and then how to share it, and then how to go back to it. So uh, the other piece of this that I uh, uh, prescribe to uh, individuals and leaders and teams is before you go and do the next operation, you need to do a before action review. Meaning you need to sit down and say, okay, what did we learn from the last project or uh, uh, task that we're doing that is similar to this, whether your team did it or another one did it, uh, or uh, we're working with a particular client on a project. It may be a little different than what we did last time, but what did we learn from working with this client before that we need to, to really take into consideration and review that information and yeah. apply it and as we plan for the next uh, yeah, iteration. Yeah, hits a little bit more of that preparing for the future right. piece. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay, so we've got three. Do you have another point for us? Well, the, the other one I would say uh, that I certainly uh, 
uh, learned very early on in, in my career was you need to learn how to fail without being a failure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, because if you uh, are going to take risk, if you're going to push yourself uh, to the limits, if you're going to uh, seek opportunities where you're going to be uncomfortable in them, uh, chances are you're going to encounter failure. Uh, and you need to learn how to build up resiliency to overcome uh, uh, failing or falling short of your uh, expectations or what others ex expect out of you. Uh, I mean, early in my career, I was uh, uh, essentially fired as a special forces team leader um, sur surrounding an operation that I did with uh, one of my uh, senior non-commissioned officers. Mm -hmm. And my commanding officer basically brought me in and said, you didn't measure up to my expectations, so I'm uh, going to relieve you of your uh, position. I'm going to put you in this position, and we'll give you another chance uh, to redeem yourself, and to, uh, uh, and we'll see in six months how, uh, what we do. Um, and so I, you know, I had uh, one or two choices at that time. I could have said, okay, well, maybe the military isn't, uh, uh, isn't what I'm cut out to do, and I had um, uh, at, at least one or two uh, uh, seniors at that time that said, you might want to consider a different career. And I had others said, uh, you know, no, you, you, you need to, uh, learn from this experience, uh, and that particular commanding officer that fired me uh, really was uh, uh, had done it for developmental reasons. I didn't, I didn't, of course, uh, appreciate it or recognize it at the time, but uh, I still stay in touch with him today. And it was one of probably the greatest early learning experiences I had uh, early on in terms of uh, how to confront uh, uh, failure. So once you, so let's go back to that experience because I think everyone can relate to having something like that but they didn't, maybe didn't always make the choice you made to, to kind of push through that and develop resilience. So once you kind of licked your wounds, what was your first step to work, identifying what you needed to work on and, and making that pivot? Uh, well, it was about uh, uh, seeking out uh, and asking uh, a few others around me to include uh, 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 subordinates who I had uh, a lot of respect for. I was in Special Forces, a highly select unit. These were, uh, at the time, uh, this was uh, 1978, uh, with a lot of Vietnam veterans uh, uh, in, in the organizations. Uh, and so I sought out uh, those around me, some peers, and said, um, you know, what do I, you know, give me your assessment. What do I need to do differently to be a better officer, a better leader, and a better teammate? Um, and they did that, uh, and, and I trusted them. Uh, uh, and you know, several of them you know, convinced me that, uh, hey, you know, we, we, you know, we all experienced this to certain degrees, particularly those who had been in the service a while and, and, and served in Vietnam. And uh, it was really that mentoring ship to convince me. And I it, then the other element of this is is I wasn't going to let this failure uh, consume me and define me as an individual or a leader. Uh, and I was going to prove to myself and to others that uh, I was better than, uh, than, uh, than that. Yeah. You're, you're touching on something that I don't know if we have an answer to how you get it. But it was like deep down in you there was a level of will. And that, and that will, that spirit pushed back and said, I'm not going to let this define me. Yeah. That's, I, the, that's the interesting question of how do you develop will in someone, and can you? Yeah. And I think that's a, uh, you know, you, you have to... I, I, the, the book, The Ideal Team Player by Patrick Lencioni, uh, I think talks about this in terms of what he describes as one of the characteristics of the ideal team player, and he, he, he frames it around uh, having hungry, hunger uh, to excel, to produce the results. And I think you, you, you do need to have that level of desire, that you know, um, falling short of the, the results you're seeking uh, uh, isn't good enough. Now, that doesn't mean that you do anything uh, to achieve those results, but you always uh, 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 seek to uh, do better and, and, and improve your performance. Even when you're successful, there's probably things uh, we can do uh, to, uh, to improve our performance. Yeah. So learning how to fail without being a failure. And so I think, did you have one more point after this? Yeah, one? I think that the last thing I would want to highlight is uh, 
something that's said in our military a lot is mission first, people always. Because these two mm. things come in conflict all the time uh, in terms of, and I think it's really pertinent in the business world, you know, where we obviously we want to make a profit. Uh, the quarterly earning statement is important. You're only as successful as the, as a, as a, you know, your, your last month's uh, uh, production. Uh, but I think uh, the mission first, meaning that it, it does count, and we uh, uh, it, certainly in the military, lives are at stake, uh, and um, uh, coming in second uh, uh, is not uh, something we, have to, we strive to do. We want to be successful every time out the gate, even though that, uh, that may not uh, happen. Um, and, but uh, you need to make sure that you do that, I believe, with in mind that people are first. You need to take care of your people, uh, and you need to have that in consideration as you go through that. And sometimes, uh, and that means having a very open, I think transparent dialogue with the people around you, because sometimes that may mean that on a Friday night, you gotta ask them to work till uh, midnight to produce something, mm -hmm. but how you go about doing it uh, makes a lot of difference in terms of achieving this mission first, but at the same time taking care of people. And then sometimes maybe because uh, you have a, somebody uh, that, that has a family, a big family uh, uh, engagement or something, you need to say, hey, you need to go to that. That, that is more important, you know. Going to your uh, son's birthday or celebrating an anniversary with your wife is more important than staying here to produce this product, even though that's uh, that's extremely important for the business. I remember you telling a story one time in the classroom, not a story, but just telling about how when you were an early in your career as an officer, and I think you continued all the way through your career, you used to carry a notebook around, right. and you would make the, write down the names of people, and you'd write down important facts about them so you could get to know them better. Yeah, so I think it's important. I mean, I'm, I'm not blessed with... Uh, uh, a memory where I, uh, on meeting someone for the first time that I will always remember their name, put their face with it, and remember their birthday, remember those little details. But I think it's very important uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that, you, uh, that you're able to do that. And also, I think it's very important that you uh, thank people for, uh, for the little things that they do for you every day. And uh, one of the things in the military that we, is, is a certain a part of our, Tradition is we have commander's coins that we give for excellence to soldiers. And then uh, also just writing a personal note to a leader or a soldier when they did something exceptional. And it really struck me one time when I was a battalion commander that I had written a note to, uh, to a soldier or to a ranger who had uh, been selected as uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, ranger of the, uh, of the quarter, if you will, and I was going through the barracks uh, 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 where the, s the soldiers live and, and happened to uh, go into his room. And on his bulletin board, pinned to the middle of it, was this note. And it really struck me that, obviously, that gesture, which didn't take a lot of time, uh, and I didn't think a lot about it at the time, it had a, a significant impact on him as an individual. Um, and so I think th th that type of uh, is very important. Uh, yeah. To be able to do so, most little things go a long way. Handwritten notes. I love the idea of even a commander's coin and finding other ways in our own lives to create right. something like that. Right. I, I can't believe it. The time is already up. So, I'm going to have to bring you back for another show, a <laughs> future point, to talk about the challenges of developing MBA students into leaders. Um, but before I let you go, I ask all my guests this question uh, What is one life hack for us that we could take away, either personally or professionally? to make our lives a little more free from dysfunction? Well, you gave me a warning that you were gonna ask me that, so I thought about that a little bit. I think um, it, it is to have a routine, and I, uh, I believe is the routine need, uh, would revolve around family, fitness, and friends. So uh, I like to say, you, you know, you, you need to have all three of those in your daily life, and you need to demonstrate that, and you need to allow those that you work with in the workplace to put uh, that into their, their their routines, whether it's daily routines and weekly routines, but 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 be able to uh, to spend time uh, on all of those things: family, uh, fitness, and friends. And I, and I want to kind of end with this comment. So you, you talk about people that dedicate their life to serving the United States and serving the military. 
Those are very long hours. Those are very rigorous schedules. Those are being deployed. And I think you make an important call to all leaders that as a leader, it's your job to help make sure those people's lives have some level of balance, that you focus on making sure they're including family and fitness and friends in their life so they don't become out of balance. I know we won't have time to talk about this, but you shared that even when you coach now those rising leaders inside the military, 90% of the time, their issue is they're out of balance. Correct. And getting them back in balance. And it's and you're really telling us today that's the job of a leader to make sure that you, you keep that front and center. Otherwise, your people will get burned out and they won't be able to, to either be leaders for the future or accomplish the mission, right. which are both not, not good. Right. <laughs> Ken, thank you. This has no. been an absolute pleasure. So if thank people you, want to learn more about you or what you're up to, where, where could be a good place that they could go? Well, uh, Gozetta Business School. Uh, at Dean King is, a, is my Twitter handle. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, the, the stuff that you've been doing at the school and continue to do is absolutely amazing. So keep up, keep up the great work. Okay, thank uh, you. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on and thank you for listening. And so continue to fight the good fight for dysfunction. Follow us every Tuesday, uh, of course, on Facebook Live, every 9 a.m. Eastern. We have a new show. And you can listen on iTunes, Twitter, on at the WP Therapist, and Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Brandon Smith WPT. And, of course, if you just want to get, gather old shows and watch them, you can go to the workplacetherapist.com. So until we talk and see each other next week, have an awesome week and an awesome life.